Hey, welcome to Crumbs 13. So um, I have just a short word that I want to share that is so directly from heaven. And it came out of a conversation that I had with a friend of mine about healing. She had called me and we were chatting about healing. And one of the things that she was asking me was where I stood on faith healing. So basically asking like, if someone doesn't get healed, is it because, could it be because they didn't have enough faith? And it's interesting because that is not necessarily a yes or no question. And we got into this really actually quite wonderful conversation. And I want to share it with you because when I look at scripture, I don't see any kind of recipe or specific instructions for how to pray for people if this or pray for people if that. I do see order in the way that we pray, right? I do see so much order in the way that Jesus handled things, but I don't see like every time someone came to him for healing that they got healed because they had great faith. I don't see that every time. We see that in scripture, but not every time. Um, we see people in scripture that had sin and Jesus said to them, go and sin no more. But it's not because of sin every time, because in John um, chapter nine, we see the blind man and the disciples ask Jesus outright. They say, why was this man born blind? Is it because of his sin or the sin of his parents? And Jesus responds and says, it's to give God the glory. And so we know that, um, sin can be a component. We know faith is a component. Um, and we know that, uh, things that are allowed can be allowed because God, um, deserves all of the glory. And um, so then we got into this conversation. Well, you know, one thing that she had said to me was, um, well, if God is sovereign and in control, then we should just be praying that his will be done. And it was such great timing because in a women's study that I host uh, every other Friday, we had talked about this, like just pray God's will be done, which we are to pray that what happens in heaven would happen here on earth and that God's will would be done. Yes, absolutely. We are to pray that. That being said, first Corinthians, Paul also says that we are called into partnership with Jesus and a partnership with Jesus doesn't look like throwing our hands up and just being like, well, God, your will be done. It doesn't, it doesn't always look like that. Sometimes it looks like praying with a reckless abandonment and passion for Jesus, not knowing if the outcome is going to turn out the way you want it to. And why do we do that? Why are we called into this partnership with Jesus? It's because he wants our whole heart. He wants us to trust him completely. And he wants to know that he can trust us completely. That if we're called to intercede for somebody, whether it's because they're, they're sick physically or spiritually, whatever it might be, that no matter the outcome, that we're going to do it because we're called to be obedient sons and daughters. And as we grow in our obedience, what we're going to find is that it's more about the act of obedience and faith that, you know, God is sovereign. He is in control, but he's called me as an intercessor in this situation or that situation. But I'm focused on Jesus. I'm not focused on the outcome necessarily. My eyes are fixed on Christ and what he's asking me to do right here in this moment. As soon as we start putting our eyes on the outcome, that gives room for the enemy to start coming in and whispering lies or maybe creating doubt or confusion about what God has asked us to do. It doesn't always turn out the way that we think it's going to turn out, but we have to know that it's all according to his plan and according to how he wants to be glorified. And every single situation that we walk into, whether it's, you know, going and praying over a homeless person, which is, you know, something that happened to me just the other day, or it's praying over a family member, you, the outcome may not look the way you want it to look, but because you are obedient, you are growing in greater measure in the likeness of Jesus Christ, which is the point. It's the whole point. It's the whole point of being here. It's the whole point of being a Christian is to grow in likeness like Jesus. We want, we want to become a mere image of Jesus Christ. And as long as we're in these fleshly bodies, we're going to have things. We're going to have things that pop up that are going to try to um, steal our faith or make us question whether or not we moved 
um, in the way that the Holy Spirit was asking us to move. But I'm telling you, we have to have such a great dependence on the voice of the Holy Spirit because scripture is amazing and gives us such a great outline for how to be like Jesus. But every situation can look different in terms of how we pray, when we pray, what we pray for, if there needs to be sin repented for, if it's an act of faith, or if it's just sitting next to somebody and showing them the love of Jesus Christ. Every situation can be different. And so we have to be fully dependent on hearing his voice. And I believe that things that are coming in the world, it's going to require a greater dependence than ever before. And so we have to be so fixed on knowing the word of God, having the word of God written on our hearts, that we can speak it out because it is sharper than a two-edged sword. Scripture says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. We need to be able to speak out the word of God in command, like taking authority, not because we're powerful, but because Jesus Christ lives within us and he is powerful and we are vessels of honor and we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And yes, he's sovereign and yes, he's in control, but that does not change the partnership that he has called us to. So um, it was just such a great conversation and I felt like it was really important. Um, it's interesting because this morning Belinda posted on our Instagram page um, a post just about how Mary, when Jesus performed his first miracle, you know, she she told those servants, she said, do whatever he says, obey whatever he says. And that is a command for all of us. Whatever he says, obey him because he is the creator of the universe. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what's going to give him the most glory and what's going to make you more like him. And so just continue growing in that trust relationship, knowing that no matter what the outcome is, that um, you get to count it all joy because in being obedient to Jesus, we have eternal life and this life is a vapor. And so we just get to count all of it joy, persecution, um, outcomes that don't match what we want. We just get to count it all joy and we get to carry the peace of Christ in this life. And so I hope this blesses you. If we can be praying for you, as always, reach out. And um, yeah, we can't wait to meet you at the master's table.